For the better part or for the worse, AI is here to stay. It's here to help us, whether it's AI tools for text, AI tools for art, AI tools to remove background, and it's here to scare us sometimes with a lot of artists feeling like, you know, they have no place in the world. My thoughts about that are a totally different story and I will probably make a video about that, but for now I would like to focus on a new AI art tool on the platform that I think I love the most <laughs> recently, which is Kittle. In this video, I want to show you how to use their AI tool while designing different print and demand products. I'm going to design two products of my own while using their AI art tool for that, as well as the AI background remover. And at the end of all this, designing, uploading to Zazzle, uploading to TeePublic, I'm also going to be designing a little Pinterest pin as a spoiler for our Pinterest marketing video. I hope that you guys are excited about this as I am, and you know what, let's just get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayo, and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And today, I'm all about Kittle AI, showing you the things that you can do with their AI art generator, as well as their AI background remover. And those tools on Kittle actually work faster than Canva, which has been an amazing surprise for me, especially now that I'm in Greece, and internet here is so, I do have a lot of things to say about AI tools and especially about Kittle's new AI that has also various different features. I mean, this is the largest amount of filters or types of art that I've seen so far. It's so accessible, it's so out there, and I can talk about it forever, but I know that you guys are not here to hear me talk. You're here to watch me actually do stuff. So with that said, I'm going to perform my well-known magic trick. So I can be right here in the corner and we are on Kittle. Opening a new design, 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. It's kind of how I start things. And if I have to design it in inches because I want to control my DPI and I don't want it to be a mess, we're going to start with 16 by 14 inches in 300 DPI. This is a size I use a lot for t-shirts, even though people use like very big designs because I like how they're in hoodies. Going straight to the AI, I typed in cool llama with sunglasses. <laughs> That has been quite fun. And they have all of these different filters, but I felt like I was completely drawn to just do one of the artistic icon things, like the clip art. So I went with the artistic one for clip art, and we have this llama, which is super cool. This is seriously a very cool llama. But I wanna see if they can give me something else. So I went with their kawaii icon, because you know, I can generate and see what makes me feel, I don't know, productive. And I'm looking at this llama and at this one, and I'm cleaning the background after changing the background color of the design. Because if this goes for t-shirts, most likely I'm going to have to have them in colors or in black or in blue or whatever. So I just want to see that everything's clear. The AI was so fast with cleaning backgrounds. It's amazing. And I feel like the other llama is a bit more my style, especially looking at different colors. Because that icon, the kawaii thing, has a black background, it's working so much more for me than this one. So this one is a bye-bye. By the way, it's still saved to your uploads, so you don't have to do it all over again. And I'm thinking, what can I do with this llama? And for me, uh, like, no drama llama is something I want to do, so I'm adding text, but it feels like it's just not going to fit for me for a t-shirt for now, and I do have notebooks. So I'm going to change my design completely in the middle to eight and a half wide and 11 inch long, which is the size of the big notebooks on Zazzle. That's where I'm selling notebooks. Don't worry, I'm gonna design a t-shirt later. And for now, I'm just gonna take my llama and I'm gonna center it and I'm gonna take my text and I have the new drama llama. Let's work on the backgrounds a little bit. You're gonna watch me change the background a million times in this tutorial because sometimes you just have to see all the colors to see what works. And of course, adding some textures which is one of my favorite features on Kittle. I love them, especially for notebook design, and I've also been using them a lot in my shower curtain project. So this has been an enormous help. I think this one also sold a bunch of stuff, the one with the leaves. And of course I release the texture and place it behind all the other layers because I don't want it on the llama itself. Again, playing with the colors. I feel like this will be done so many times. And I'm going to my no drama and trying to find a font that works for me. I really like the Alpha Slab. I feel like it's uh, really bold and it really fits the style of the llama. And I think like if I go on a white color palette, it will work more or white design, basically matching the pink to the llama and adding border to this, which is an insane feature. And I love how many things you can do with Kittle. 
of course, my no drama llama. And I'm looking at this. I need to make my llama a bit smaller. Maybe flip it around to look from the side. And during this process, which was obviously a lot longer than what you're seeing now, I switch the backgrounds a million times. I even switch the textures a few times and then come back to this. I even change the fonts a little bit. But at the end of the day, I think I really like this kind of result. I don't have a lot of like green, yellowish notebooks. So I thought this would be a good idea. And I'm choosing that same green and making it yellow, that same like line of palette, the same palette, palette colors, and basically creating this effect with Kittle that the yellow is on top and at the bottom and at the middle, it's white. But I felt like something is missing, like to bind the design together because of all this yellow. So I went into elements, typed in sun, and decided to take one of these graphic elements and put it behind the llama and perhaps give it, you know, the same color, the same yellow color, so that I can tie the design together so it's going to look a bit more matching. And I'm looking at this, it's not the exact color, I'm pushing it back, and it's kind of behind the texture as well, which I really like. And all you have to do at this point is kind of adjust it to what you want it to look like and download it with 300 dpi jpeg file haha <laughs> now the second thing that i'm gonna do is i'm gonna delete the elements i'm gonna hide them they're not gone and i'm gonna download this just this because i'm designing notebooks and they have a back cover that i'm gonna need this for now what i want to do i'm gonna activate it so i'm gonna see it i saved it with a certain file name and i'm starting a new design because we did say i'm gonna do t-shirts so I'm going to do t-shirts. And for that, I chose the poster size because I think like it fits a lot of t-shirt designs. And I'm going back to their AI and I thought to myself, what do I want to do? I want a sloth. I love the whole concept of the sloth. Yeah, I'm not lazy. I'm meditating. I love those t-shirts. I haven't had a sloth in a long time. And I wanted to check a little bit of a different filter. So the detailed drawing one was something that I really wanted to try and it came up with this result which was really adorable to me. Obviously change the background AI remover to the background of the actual art and changing my background color again and again and again and again and again <laughs> multiple times as I do. And now I was thinking you know I'm going to put in a circle perhaps the same one with the llama actually because it kind of worked for me and this is something that the sloth is going to be over because as you can see the way he's sleeping, he doesn't have a body. So I could have recreated the sloth, but I chose to use it because I can still use it here, obviously to align it a little bit better to fit, you know, the circle. So his hands sort of go over the circle and add text. So I wanted to do, I'm not lazy. And then I'm and meditating. And each one of these, I went through so many fonts to figure out what I want, trying to do all caps and, really trying to think to myself, where am I placing my text? And I know that this is something that looks like it comes in so easy for me, especially when you're seeing the whole process sort of being sped up, because this is something that took me an hour and a half to do, especially when I'm really focused and I want to make a good design. I feel like it's dumb because like my t-shirt designs take me the longest amount of time, whether if I'm designing like a notebook cover or shower curtain, just making a nice pattern and some text and I'm good. But with t-shirts, I'm really trying to make sure that everything looks good. This is something that people wear every day. I know that for my t-shirt designs, I'm super picky. And I also want to make sure that I can activate this on the majority of colors available on TeePublic because, you know, if I make something that is more white, it's going to be easier for me to adapt it to more colors of t-shirts rather than playing around with black that might not look good on everything. Granted, this could just be my personal style and you can think that you know, black on pink looks good. But for me, I have this aesthetic thing with colors. <laughs> I'm really not a free color person that can just put in all the colors and like it. And I really like to like my designs. So what I'm doing here, other than using the distort feature of Kittle text, and again, this is not a full Kittle tutorial. We've had Kittle tutorials on this channel. This is just something to go over their AI. I'm using all of their effects, whether it's the block shadows, whether it's the effect on the text itself or the effects of moving the text in a certain pattern or way. And I really like the line shadow. It's a very light one. I think it's the most closest to what I used to journal or want to have like this precision thing like this really minimalistic or gentle touch to it. And I'm distorting it to go along with sort of half my half of circle because I was thinking to myself, what if I'll have something else at the bottom? 
what if there would be something under the um meditating to really wrap this together because the meditating is really long and it's not going to look good if I take it all the way down. So in that case, I'm just going to grab a text. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to remove the distort feature because, you know, I don't need it and distort it the same way. And I wrote hashtag real life sloth using the circle option direction inverted so I can have it facing upwards like a bowl and not downwards and really expanding it. And this is a game. You expand your design, you make it bigger, you change the arch, you make it bigger or smaller. And at the end of the day, this is what I came up with. And I wanted to test it on multiple colors and I felt like it looked good when it's white, but the other colors, I didn't feel like it looks really good. So I changed the background to black and the color of I'm not lazy to white because I need to see it. The I'm is completely white without a feature. I also worked on the font a little bit more to wrap it up and I felt like this was almost perfect. I just played around with the line of the I'm for such a long time to fit the bottom of the lines and changed the meditating to white with their lines being a shade of green. And now I was happy. I feel like I'm happy. I feel like this has went, like this has gone through so much since the beginning of this design and the sloth really wraps it up. But at the same time, you're still designing. You're not just taking the sloth from the AI art and you know, doing nothing. 300 DPI export removing background because this needs to be on t-shirt and downloading it with a PNG format file. Going to my Zazzle self-love journaling store and clicking on creating a new product. There was a full notebook tutorial, by the way, on this channel and a review of the quality. So for now, let's just see how this artwork works with the Zazzle notebooks. I'm going with eight and a half by 11 inch hardcover notebook and I'm dropping both of my no drama llama designs, the one for the cover and the one for the back cover. I'm also going to drop in the meditation sloth just because, you know, I might use it later and deleting the ones that are not necessary and placing the designs both on the front and on the back. Let's have a look at my preview. I like it. <laughs> I actually really like it. This has made me want to buy this notebook <laughs> so much. Now all I have to do is click on done and don't forget to sell it if you're on Zazzle. Just designing it is not enough. I'm going to head over to sell this drama llama, adding this to my store with a title, choosing a department, filling up your description, which is something that I think a lot of people forget to do, but it's really important. Choosing a store, a category of a store, putting all my tags in. Yeah, I know it's a speed one. I told you there is a full tutorial on notebooks. There will be a link to that down below. Clicking on suitable for all ages my commission and show me my product. And at that point, I also download the mock-up because I want to use that mock-up from Zazzle and I want to have it for later. So I kind of have this practice of doing it. T public, upload art and let's do something with our sloth. While this artwork is being uploaded, which in real time took about six minutes because of the internet in Greece, I wrote down the design title, the main tag. I also put in some of the description and the supporting tags. No, it's not uh, mature content. I chose the dark features of the t-shirts while going over all of the t-shirt colors to see if I think they look good. Like for me, I didn't like some of the reds with that green thing, so I kind of turned them off. I also didn't like the orange, for example. I didn't thought it was working. So I chose only the colors of t-shirts that I feel works with the hoodie. Make sure to make the design a bit smaller. I always choose red because that's the best visible and I push it up above the pockets. Otherwise it looks horrible. And then of course, adjusting the colors for everything else. I don't have the red activated, so I can't choose it. I really like it on the dark green and on the navy. I felt like it looks really good. Maybe again, it's a matter of personal taste. And for you guys, you should just activate everything. So I ran it through all of them, the onesies, the kids clothing, and then run everything else. With the stickers, I love the fact that they have the die cut and background feature. And with this, I just left it like that. With the mugs and the tumbler, I usually like make them a bit smaller with the travel mug. I usually make the design a bit smaller, so it's going to be a bit more visible. I feel like sometimes when the design is too big, it just looks huge on the mug. So if it's a bit smaller, it looks better designed for me. This is, you know, product design, not graphic design. And the different and a different ratio for the wall art. Five by six looks amazing. And I like the pastel blue combination here. And I feel like I was using it a lot. Don't forget to center your artwork when you're doing the notebooks and journals on TeePublic, it's always uncentered. The, this was, this was a good one. <laughs> I really like those. I just left them with the asphalt color that was automatically chosen from the first t-shirt. Working on your wall tapestries, which might not be 
that good and some of them might not be visible depending on the size of your work but as this is a tutorial to use the AI it was fine for me uh, the pins the same magnets the same and publish I don't bother with face masks anymore do you guys sell face masks now and let's have a look at my design oh it's so cute and at this point I was like okay I'm downloading a mock-up because I'm gonna do a Pinterest pin and so I tried saving the mug, but saving the mug uh, file isn't really nice from Tbublix, so I screenshot it. I'm using a Mac, so I have a different screenshot feature. I don't know what you guys are using. And I also screenshot the premium racerback tank top for women. And then I went to Kittle again with a new project of 1,000 by 1,500 pixels because that's the size of a Pinterest pin for the millionth time. 300 DPI, even though it doesn't matter because we're gonna use it digitally only. And I saved the pin by its name so I can, you know, reach it. I feel like a lot of people don't bother with having names for designs, but it's really important. I uploaded both of these, the mug and the tank top, and as you can see, it would have taken me forever because my uploading speed is less than a mega. Ha! <laughs> Grease. And then I used the AI. And this is real time, guys. This is real time how long it took me from the slow internet in Greece, which was a huge surprise to me because it was so much faster. It was literally the amount of time it takes me with Canva when I'm on good internet. And I do know that a lot of times with a mug, especially on Canva, this just wouldn't work. It would have just deleted some of my mug. I feel like somehow the AI of Kittle just loves products. And of course, playing around with the layers, which is one of my favorite features on Kittle that you can just see the layers. And I went to the AI again. And I decided I'm going to recreate another sloth and this time it's going to be like an icon because this is a Pinterest pin. I'm thinking to use that AI icon maybe as like a logo or something like this that you can create yourself and I'm going to combine it within my Pinterest design. Now, as I mentioned, this is a spoiler for our Pinterest tutorial. So I'm going to uh, kind of speed things up <laughs> in a matter of a few seconds and try to show you a speed up process of how to create a pin because creating a pin is not that important as understanding how a Pinterest pin should look like. And in my eyes, a Pinterest pin is often a pretty gigantic flyer that has a link to it. So the the one thing that I knew that I wanted to write was now on TeePublic because it belongs on TeePublic. Obviously, if you're selling this from your own website, you're gonna have a blog or on Zazzle or on Redbubble. So the name is gonna be different and you can put your website link, but I was playing around here multiple colors, multiple texture features, kind of, I really like the leaves ones. We're talking about sloths, right? So the leaves were pretty awesome. And I'm looking at this and this has been the funnest I've had creating Pinterest pins. And the whole concept of it is to explain through this flyer, why should people go to it? So this is the perfect gift for your lazy friends. <laughs> I thought that this would be really cool. Using the distort option so much and the circle, and playing around with the colors, and this was my pin. I really love this one. I really love this one. So proud of my work, and I want you guys to enjoy it as well. That's why I shared this Pinterest pin, and it's available and public on my Kittle profile. And as you can see here, on top of the Pinterest pin that I shared with you guys, that you can restyle for your product, I also shared the designs from this tutorial and other Pinterest pins. But I think it's time to make me bigger again and summarize this video. The first thing that I would like to say is, again, this was not a full Kittle tutorial. We've had so many Kittle tutorials. I just felt like I wanted to make a tutorial to show you guys the options with this AI, as well as the options with Kittle to expand your mind. But in reality, having these step-by-step -step tutorials where I explain every single thing can be kind of counterproductive because then you're only learning to design the thing that I designed like the exact thing. I give you the idea and show you a process that can be done and then send you on your merry way to explore yourself because I feel like I've said it in the past videos, there is one game that I like to play most in the world and it's called, what does this button do? <laughs> so play that game, what does this button do on Kittle and explore the text options and other features. And of course there were previous tutorials where I showcased this much better. I can reference you to the notebook design video where I also show the qualities of Zazzle notebooks and other tutorials that I will leave a link to down below in the description. I do have a few more things to say about Kill AI and in general, but before I do that, I would like to kindly ask you that if you like this video or found this content useful, please hit the like button down below because believe it or not, 
every time you do that it really does help my channel and subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed I am so sorry to disappoint all of the people who are using Kittle for free because the free version of Kittle doesn't have these AI tools if you're on the Kittle Pro or Kittle Expert you will notice that you have a credit amount each month 20 for Kittle Pro and 100 credits for the AI art for Kittle Expert with no limit on the AI background removal tool. If you want to check out these designs or more of the templates that I have left for you, you can check out the link down below in the description to my personal templates on Kittle. I am adding more and more of these every day. I should add more because the internet here is really bad to film videos and I want to keep myself busy, so feel free to check out my templates page every now and again because you will find really awesome templates. And I would also like to create templates for you guys. So if you've watched this video until now, feel free to comment down below what kind of templates do you want me to make. Do you want an Instagram template? Do you want more Pinterest pins? Do you want to have more notebook templates? Do you want to have a greeting card template? Do you want to have t-shirt templates or mug templates? Please let me know in the comments down below and I'll create more templates for you guys just because it's fun. And also because I'm, I'm making these products for myself anyway, so why not share it with you guys? In the topic of is AI going to replace uh, graphic designers, and I feel like a lot of people are kind of mad at this, artists are mad at this, I feel like there is something that I want to say. There have been a lot of issues, and I've heard this from a lot of bloggers in LA, for example, working in Hollywood or in the film industry, not just in LA, but around the world. A lot of animators are currently really freaked out to lose their jobs to AI tools that can create animation movies. And if you think about it at the surface level from what you hear from people, it's really scary. But I don't know if you realize that the illustrators who are crying right now that AI is going to replace them, replaced other illustrators because before we reached the world of fully graphic and digital, illustrators would have been people who sketched <laughs> on paper and this would have been a film that runs really fast. So all of the illustrators today that are crying about this tool coming up and replacing them only had a job because there were other tools that helped them replace someone else. And while AI tools have replaced other people, and I've seen this with the content creation, it also created new opportunities. It created opportunities for freelancers to lower their prices because now they can work faster utilizing the same tools. It creates job opportunities as job opportunities all around the world are starting to pop up for people who know how to use these tools because yes, we have Mid Journey, we have Night Cafe, we have Kittle AI, but just because we have a tool doesn't mean that anyone can use it. I mean, a lot of graphic designers who are skilled with Photoshop are really angry that now people can just, you know, fart designs using Canva. But not everybody can make a good design on Canva. Not everyone can prompt a good design on AI or tweak it if that is the necessary case. And to be honest, most of the people that I know who are actually artists who sell art. I mean, we've had Christy on this channel. She sells physical paintings. Physical paintings. You have any idea how many people on Etsy were so mad that Etsy allows print on demand because they have to create their own art. I mean, this woman has to make uh, the painting herself and I, as a person who sells print on demand, can just design something in seconds and put it on wall art and printful or awkward styles are going to make it. So it's not fair that print on demand people are on Etsy. But that painter on Etsy that is complaining that everything replaced her the same way we are complaining that AI is going to replace us, that same lady is not actually an artist. If you look at the terms of 500 years ago, did she stretch the canvas herself? Did she make the canvas? Did she mix the paints herself or went to a horse to take the hairs off his tails and make a brush? Everything is evolving, guys. Everything is evolving. Everything is changing. Whether we're talking about copyrights, which is an ongoing process with the lawsuits against Midjourney, or we're talking about the fear of being replaced by machines. Guys, the humankind has been replaced by machines over and over and over again in the past so many years. Whether it was painters who did portraits who were replaced by photography, and photographers with professional equipment who were replaced by people with an iPhone, or now photographers who are being replaced because someone can just generate an extraordinary sunset on the beach photo instead of actually going to these places and taking those photos. AI is here 
and it's just another tool in our tool belt and I feel like it's one of the reasons why I wasn't so quick to use it as you know I'm just gonna make an art print and just use all of it because I feel like it's just a tool for me. So it's a tool for me to remove background, it's a tool for me to instantly have a sloth or a llama or any kind of animal and I either incorporate it in an existing design or I use it uh, actually on Procreate by generating this AI art and then recreating it myself with different colors in a different format and something that is more me and even making coloring pages from them. So at the end of the day, I feel like people should just chill. I'm sorry if it's going to be controversial, but hey, Kittle has the texture feature, so you don't really need to create your own patterns to be in the background. Tools are just tools. And if you feel threatened by someone going to mid journey, and just designing, 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 downloading so many of these amazing exquisite photos for print on demand. Do you think that everybody that does it actually sells everything? Are you one of those people who fall for the $5,000 selling stickers on Redbubble from an AI? Because this is not reality. The reality is using an AI, whether you use it a lot or little or not at all, create a design and market it, which is why the Pinterest pin was the best part or the most important part of this video to me. I do not have more to say, or actually I do have more to say, but I can talk for hours and I do want to make sure that this video goes online because again, it takes an enormous amount of time to actually upload them from Greece and I feel like this month has already been kind of shaky with the amount of videos I wanted to do and the reality of the internet here. So the next video that will be coming up will be on the 1st of March with my goals and I'll talk a bit more about my plans on how to utilize my time in Greece better given this internet reality on that video. But with that being said, that was it for me for today. Go ahead and check out Kittle and the awesome templates that I made for you down below. Check out their AI, design t-shirts, notebooks, pins, posts for Instagram, whatever you want to design. Have an amazing day. Thank you for watching. And as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!